In the cartoon universe, the laws of physics are suspended. When animation is combined with 3D technology, filmmakers have a new opportunity to put viewers in the heart of the action. Islands of Adventure at Universal Studios Florida is home to a new attraction considered the next generation of action entertainment. Be careful. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man combines 3D film with synchronized live special effects and moving motion-based vehicles. Steven Spielberg consulted on the project, led by Universal Studios' Senior Vice President of Design and Creative Development, Mark Woodbury. We really knew it was going to be a groundbreaking attraction, kind of a threshold attraction, taking new technologies and combining them in ways with uh, special effects and film that have never been done before. To meet the film's artistic challenges, Universal called upon Kleiser Walzak Construction Company. This innovative effects facility makes its home at Mass MoCA, a contemporary art museum in Massachusetts. It was co-founded by Jeff Kleiser and Diana Walzak. And they wanted it to be the most amazing ride in the universe. And this sort of caught our attention. The whole idea was to go inside a comic book, to take the audience inside a three-dimensional Spider-Man comic book and give them the adventure of their lives. The first thing that we needed to do was to find the look of the environments. Spider-Man's three-dimensional cityscapes are designed by art director Kent Michelson. Our characters are much more realistic than you might see in a two-dimensional comic book. So we had to come up with a look that was somewhere between photorealistic and the comic book look. Kent designs a series of detailed illustrations that are turned over to a team of computer animators. The color illustrations provide necessary direction for creating Spider-Man's dramatic locales. Excellent! But bringing the fantasy characters to life proves to be a greater challenge for the animation team led by Daryl Hunt. This is the first time that Spider-Man's ever been seen in, in, in three dimensions, and uh, we wanted him to, to really look like the superhero that he is. The animators attempted to simulate Spider-Man's movements through a process called motion capture. We tried to put guys in suits and then put sensors on their bodies, but it always fell short. If what you're trying to do is uh, create a superhuman character that's flying or leaping and spinning up, uh, you know, doing flips and landing sideways on walls, these are all things that a person can't do. So the filmmakers decided to abandon the motion capture work and animate Spider-Man's every move, frame by frame. I kind of picture Spidey as a gymnast or someone who just flipped off of walls or, you know, swung on webs. Uh, it wasn't until I had to animate the first scene, which was a big dialogue piece where he interacts with the audience themselves. With Doc Ock on the loose, this could be the That part, I had to look deeper into the character. I had to find out who Spidey was. A nice shade. The ride allows viewers to experience 3D while moving around, something that's never been done before. Software designer Frank Vitz gave his breakthrough formula an appropriately animated name. We looked at what was actually happening on the screen. The images were sort of mooshing and, and squinching. So we came up with the term squinching as uh, an abbreviation for this complex mathematical process. Three years and 35 animators later, the 16,000 film frames were ready to roll at Universal Studios Florida. To showcase the film as intended, the Spider-Man team needed a special motion base to put the film audience in the heart of the action. Called a scoop, the motion base is armed with three computer brains that synchronize its moves with the film's on-screen action. The film is projected from behind the screen. This allows designers the space for giant animated props, such as a breaking pipe, a collapsing bridge, moving walls, and other illusions. The main purpose of it is to thrill people and to convince you that you are having an experience which you're not having at all. Finally, the illusion is completed with atmospheric touches, heat blasts, water sprays, fog, and wind gusts. And Spider-Man is one thing, basically made of many, many detailed, complicated pieces. It's one big illusion. For Universal's project director, Mark Watson, 
One illusion takes audiences on a virtual flight above the city. We've got a set piece, a falling wall set piece, and two projector screens on either side to fall, along with you can hear the turbo fans overhead. Those effects and the movement of the motion base create a feel like you're levitating 40 stories that's unbelievable. You swear you're flying. The four-minute ride film gives audiences a new kind of action experience and sets the stage for even greater technological advances. So what happens next? For us anyway, the idea of continuing to see how far we can immerse people in a visceral, thrilling, compelling story is really where we're headed. If you dimwits think you're getting out of here, you're in for it! As action films evolve, innovative techniques continue to produce adrenaline-pumping moments thanks to the creative wizardry of Hollywood filmmakers and their pursuit of ultimate special effects.